Hi there, welcome to Switch Mania. I am Clarence and today, we'll talk about the best Nintendo Switch games on sale. We will be covering the UK, EU, US, Australia, and Canada eShop. But first and foremost, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you want to see more of this series, please leave a like, remember to subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to receive future notifications. Likes and subscriptions help keep the channel alive. Just a quick reminder, 90% of you guys are not yet subscribed to the channel. If you are enjoying the videos and not subscribed yet, why not? You're coming back anyways. With all that said, let's get back to the video. First on our list is Bug Academy. Bug Academy is a lot of fun to play even if it isn't the best way to study for your entomology exam. The sale price is reasonable. Bug Academy taught me that bugs are more than just annoying things that would be unfun to play in a video game. Even a few irritating parts can't ruin an otherwise enjoyable experience, so if you go into Bug Academy with that in mind, you should be fine. When it comes to indie games, Bug Academy is one of the most surprising. It's a lot of fun and has a lot of different ways to play. Next is Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition. If you haven't played Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition yet, the Nintendo Switch is most likely the best way to do so. The price is reasonable for a good Metroidvania with a focus on melee combat and numerous references to some of Nintendo's best games. When you reach the final level, simply listen for a specific tune that is woven into the music. It has a cool underground one of two beat that you won't hear anywhere else. Guacamelee is a well-crafted game that borrows and improves on ideas from some of the best games available. You'll be left wanting more. We're lucky because the next installment is coming soon, and this is a great way to prepare. If you haven't played this Switch port yet, don't pass it up. Next up, Guacamelee 2. Guacamelee 2 feels like a better version of the first game in general. And I don't mean that negatively, the first Guacamelee is an excellent example of how to create a game. The sequel to this game features solid Metroidvania mechanics, amusing dialogue, and rock-solid platforming. It's challenging, entertaining, and full of personality. Everyone who enjoys platformers, cooperative games, and, of course, Metroidvania games should play it. Overall, Guacamelee 2 is just as entertaining as the original. Some of the most difficult parts can be even more frustrating than the most difficult challenges in the original, but this is somewhat balanced by the fact that it simplifies a lot of things that were overly complicated. Next is Severed. Severed loses little, if anything, by coming to Nintendo Switch. It gives the player more space to enjoy the beautiful environments, and while the console can be difficult to play with one hand for extended periods of time, that is not a reason to avoid this game. Because it is short, you might think Severed is a game for a rainy, boring day, but it isn't. This is one of the few must-have Nintendo Switch games. Severed's strength lies in the way it shines a critical and emotional light on something that is essential to being human in a game that is so focused on the horrible and monstrous. Next up, Nobody Saves the World. Nobody Saves the World is repetitive but there is a lot to love about it. It's a fun thing to do with a friend and a memorable experience in general. Drinkbox Studios created an experience that was both enjoyable and challenging, which turned me into a glutton for punishment. This game is full of creativity, from the way it looks to the way it changes up action RPG combat. Nobody Saves the World deserves a lot of credit for what it accomplishes, and it's a must-play for anyone who enjoys bizarre post-apocalyptic settings with odd but endearing characters. Nobody Saves the World is fantastic on Switch, and anyone who hasn't yet played Drinkbox's fantastic adventure game should do so immediately. Next is The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 3. Trails of Cold Steel 3 is a must-play for anyone who has played or read the first two games in the series. Everyone who enjoys RPGs will enjoy this ode to the genre. Cold Steel 3 is fantastic in a variety of ways. It has intriguing side quests, a fun combat system, and a story that transforms what could have been a mundane routine into something extraordinary. Despite its flaws, this is a must-have Switch title because it can be played anywhere and is a lengthy RPG. Despite some flaws, The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 3 on Switch is a good rendition of a great RPG. The Cold Steel series should be accessible to as many people as possible as a result of this Nintendo Switch port. Next is Slay the Spire. With more roguelikes and card-based strategy games being added to the eShop on a regular basis, new games must constantly find new ways to stand out. Slay the Spire is successful in this way because it lacks a traditional story or plot and instead allows the player to become completely immersed in strategic thinking. It's not the most visually appealing or flashy roguelike out there, but it has my attention. Slay the Spire cleverly combines the roguelite and card game genres. It has a deep and satisfying strategy layer that encourages you to try new things over multiple runs to the top of the tower. It's already one of my favorite games, so I can only hope for more updates. 
Next up, Unsighted. Unsighted drew me in with its intriguing world, epic battles, and a doomsday clock that added to the story's intrigue. It's one of my favorite surprises of the year because it demonstrates that what I did had a genuine impact on the world, even if it wasn't always what I desired. Even though I lost friends along the way, I became increasingly determined to complete this incredible adventure. Overall, I hope Unsighted does not turn out to be a hidden gem, because it's a hidden gem that should be seen by as many players as possible. Even though the lifespan gimmick is stressful, it is this one of a kind aspect that will keep you on your toes, make you panic and worry, but ultimately make you love your time as Alma. The story is lovely, and the characters are all full of life and easy to like. This results in a journey that you will enjoy. Next is Dodgeball Academia. The best part of Dodgeball Academia, however, is when everything comes together as an RPG. It's exciting to figure out how to defeat a difficult opponent. I enjoy going on adventures and discovering what will happen next in the ridiculous story. This is a fantastic sports game but it's also a fantastic RPG. It, like Golf Story, should appeal to people who aren't into sports. Dodgeball Academia is coming to a variety of platforms, but in my opinion, the Switch is the best place to play it. Because the camera angle is fixed, the controls are simple to use, and I believe they will be a good fit for the camera's portability. I can see this becoming a new favorite party game. Next up, Wandersong. From an emotional standpoint, Wandersong is the most satisfying game I've played. It's a roller coaster ride through a wide range of emotions, all wrapped up in a carefully crafted construction paper world. I had no idea about this game until about a month ago. This is one I'll never forget. Wandersong is a fun, easy-to-follow adventure that builds to a memorable climax. The game has a few flaws the majority of which can be traced back to its humble indie beginnings. However, the game's touching characters and story more than compensate for its flaws. Put on your cape and hat like a hero, and warm up your pipes, because it's time to emotionally save the world. Next is Trine 4, The Nightmare Prince. Frozenbite has returned the series to its roots with Trine 4, The Nightmare Prince, making puzzles that change over time the main draw. The Switch's controls are tight, and the basic button layout and controls feel natural. This game has so many fun and challenging puzzles that it's worth buying just to keep your brain busy. Despite the fact that the story and action aren't as deep as they could be and that I got lost in the puzzles, I thought this was one of the best Switch games I'd played. Trine 4 is beautiful and perhaps a little too simple for solo play but it really shines when played with two or more people. Next up, the infectious madness of Dr. Decker. Dr. Decker's infectious madness is an FMV game like I haven't seen in years. It has a complete mystery story, characters with issues that can be shown, and a plethora of paths the player can take. The fact that you can think about whatever you want adds to the game's appeal. Dr. Decker's infectious madness is a new way to do full motion video for today's games. This text-based adventure game is a great way to get into the genre because it features a cast of strange and troubled characters who give excellent performances. Next is I was a teenager Exocolonist. When I Was a Teenager Exocolonist is an intriguing social sim with deep role-playing and a beautiful world. As an added bonus, it includes fun collectible card game mechanics. What's more important, I believe, is that it's one of the best video games about growing up that I've ever seen. Even if you are no longer a teen, you should not miss out on these teen thrills. When I Was a Teenager Exocolonist can be played repeatedly, and it's unique enough that we think you should try it. Even if the game's mechanics aren't particularly deep and the story takes a while to get going, it's still worthwhile to play. It not only depicts what it's like to be a teenager, but it also features stunning graphics and music. Next up, One Shot, World Machine Edition. Because it is so different from other games, One Shot is one of my favorite adventure games. Even though the game lost some of its enchantment when it was ported to consoles, the new features more than compensated, especially for fans who purchased the World Machine Edition. Whether this is your first, second, or third adventure with Nico, it will be one you never forget. Even so, these aren't major issues. I can't think of a single reason why anyone with even a passing interest in point-and-click adventure shouldn't play one-shot, World Machine Edition. There are worse ways to spend two afternoons than guiding Nico through one of the Switch's most creative and endearing indie games. Next is Saviors of Sapphire Wings slash Stranger of Sword City Revisited. As someone who has long enjoyed grid-based dungeon crawlers, I'm pleased to say that Saviors of Sapphire Wings and Stranger of Sword City Revisited are two of the genre's best. If you enjoy being challenged, this pack is ideal. A collection of titles can be a quick way to make money or a way to commemorate an anniversary. Saviors of Sapphire Wings slash Stranger of Sword City Revisited is a masterfully crafted package of two amazing dungeon crawling adventures in this case. This is a series that works well on the Nintendo Switch, and I hope that more NIS games are on the way. Next up, Grindstone. Grindstone is a Nintendo Switch puzzle game. Don't be fooled by the fact that it was designed for mobile devices. This game is a true gem that will captivate players for hours on end, 
and everything about it is delightfully addictive and well executed. If you think a game that started on a mobile device can't be fun on the Nintendo Switch, you should try Grindstone right away. Every move in Grindstone must be planned, taking into account not only the game but also the resources that you will receive in the future. The game is a beautiful puzzle game with a constant risk-reward system. It is the best in its class. Next is Assault Android Cactus Plus. I would have laughed if someone had told me that one day I would enjoy the fast-paced action of a twin-stick shooter. It has well-developed characters with a variety of personalities and skill sets, and the difficulty curve is both difficult and fair. The ability to play with a single stick on the Switch version is a fantastic addition. It's inconvenient when big enemies are nearby, but it works, a lesson in shooting with two sticks. The controls are simple, but the environments and enemy waves are complex and well-designed. I keep returning because there are so many different ways to play and things to discover. Assault Android Cactus Plus is a must-have for anyone who enjoys arcade games alone or with a group of friends. Next up, Citizen Sleeper. Citizen Sleeper is a game that players who enjoy good story adventures might enjoy. It's a simple game in many ways, but there's a lot to discover if you give it a shot. I felt like I had some control over my character and their new life because there were so many options, and the dice mechanic kept things interesting by adding a bit of randomness. A fantastic piece of cyberpunk fiction. Citizen Sleeper is brimming with ideas and atmosphere, and it enjoys luring you into its world by teasing you. Don't be put off by the text-heavy gameplay if you enjoy a dystopian sci-fi setting with good world-building and tight role playing mechanics. Next is Goragoa. Goragoa performs admirably on the Switch. The four-panel interface is suitable for a portable game, and the touchscreen allows you to play the entire game. It's a fun game to play on the go, but don't wait too long between rounds because it can be difficult to remember which panels led you to the current stage of the puzzle and how you last changed the panels. Overall, Goragoa is a strange and unusual puzzle game that anyone who enjoys this type of game will enjoy. Some of the puzzles are difficult to solve creatively because panels can be arranged in inventive ways at the appropriate zoom level. It's a really well-made game, and I thought the difficulty level was just right fun and satisfying. Even though it was brief, I enjoyed Goragoa. Next up, The Artful Escape. The Artful Escape is visually and orally appealing, and the story is simple enough even if you don't have a famous uncle who sings folk music. It only lasts about three hours, making it a brief experience. Also, the gameplay isn't particularly difficult, so those looking for a challenge will be disappointed. France's story is moving and memorable, and the places he shreds through are breathtaking. People who admire the appearance of artists such as David Bowie should definitely play this game especially if they are musicians themselves. You may learn more about what you truly desire in life and be inspired to attend your own cosmic extraordinary. Next is Kentucky Route Zero, TV edition. Kentucky Route Zero may not be for everyone, but for those who are, it will be an unforgettable experience. Players who enjoy games with compelling narratives will remember this one for a long time. It has a dark, mysterious atmosphere, memorable settings, and characters who seem real. It's a story about trying to find something you've misplaced and possibly discovering something new along the way, whether you intend to or not. You won't find a challenge or anything with more action here, but if you want a strange and mysterious story, you've come to the right place. Next is Oxenfree. Oxenfree is a fascinating game. To get the most out of the experience, experience, play it in a quiet place where you won't be interrupted. It's short and unique, but you can play it over and over. There is nothing else you can do in the game besides interact with the world and what it has to offer. But it's interesting to look back and see how your choices influence the plot. It's not as good as Telltale, but it's not bad either. I returned to it because the art, characters, and choices were all excellent. And you simply cannot turn off the radio. Oxenfree has a terrifying story, a fantastic soundtrack, and stunning graphics that combine to create a truly unforgettable experience. I can't recommend this game enough to anyone who enjoys getting lost in a moody adventure. Next up, Neon White. Neon White is an unmissable video game. It has a story that uses stereotypes to get to the heart of what it means to be human, as well as a very precise, fast-paced, and skill-based gameplay. There are times when you know you've discovered something truly amazing, such as a game that you think about even when you're not playing it. You might be curious about where your next session will go or what the story will reveal. Neon White is one of these games, and it is always exciting, often funny, and never boring. One of the best and most exciting releases of 2022. Next up, Paradise Killer. Paradise Killer takes place in one of the strangest worlds you could ever inhabit. Some parts of the game feel like an old-school detective game, complete with a good, changeable soundtrack. Even if the universe and its meanings can throw you a curveball from time to time, it's easy to get lost in the vast and beautiful open world. When you add in a fun way to explore and solve puzzles, you might forget your solving a murder. When it comes to exploration, Paradise Killer is unlike any other game. There is a mystery to solve 
but you can spend a long time just taking in the sights and sounds of the island. This one will stick with you for a long time. Next is Telling Lies. Telling Lies has one of the best stories I've seen on the Nintendo Switch in a long time, and it does so in an unusual and interesting way. Even though the credits have rolled, I'm still thinking about the game's memorable characters and the intricate web of secrets I was able to decipher through careful analysis and copious notes. I've never been a fan of FMV in video games, but after seeing Sam Barlow's work, I think I might be. Telling Lies has a great story and lets us control an intriguing video game right away. Even though there are some things that could be improved, the title as a whole is good. For Nintendo Switch owners who enjoy good stories, this is a must-play FMV. Next up, Sayonara Wild Hearts. Sayonara Wild Hearts is more than just a game to me. It is a method of relieving stress. It's a story about self-acceptance. It serves as a reminder that things break, but that does not imply that we are broken. It was once a dream, but it is now only a memory. It transcends time and space, as it should. Wild Hearts live forever. It's difficult to review a game that everyone agrees is fantastic, but if you're on the fence about Sayonara Wild Hearts, I strongly advise you to give it a shot. There isn't a single component that hasn't been created with love and care, and the pop-heavy soundtrack and extremely enjoyable gameplay tie everything together. Next is Gone Home. I remember sitting at my computer after finishing Gone Home and staring at the screen for quite some time. I didn't want to move or speak. I just wanted to reflect on what had happened to me in a single night. The Fulbright Company knows how to tell a story and they do an excellent job of making the player feel like a part of it. Slowly playing this game will provide you with a story that demonstrates what the medium of video games is truly capable of. Gone Home is a game that you should enjoy and remember. Next is Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. Shantae and the Pirate's Curse is one of those games that can instantly make a player happy. Perhaps this is because it reminds us of some of the things that first drew us to video games and continue to do so. It has a great soundtrack and characters who are entertaining to be around. Yes, he is influenced by Zelda, Mega Man, Castlevania, and Metroid, but he has his own charisma and charm, and he is very good at what he wants to do. Shantae is the type of old-school platformer that takes advantage of every bit of potential that modern platformers have, as if space on a NES cartridge were equally limited. Aside from the incredible artwork that went into creating Pirate's Curse, it is simply a lot of fun to play. Next up, Thumper. Thumper is a fantastic rhythm game for Nintendo Switch. It's even better because of its well-oiled reaction-based gameplay, haunting music, and unique look. It doesn't do much wrong as one of the most enjoyable games on the console. Those who aren't interested in obtaining S ranks, on the other hand, won't have much reason to continue playing. Thumper has simple controls and a strong sense of progression, both of which are important in a rhythm game. Players must pay close attention to their surroundings, particularly the sounds, because their timing must be perfect in order to progress. Those who are easily swayed by catchy rhythms will enjoy this game due to the way it is played. And last, but not the least, Dawn of the Monsters. Dawn of the Monsters gets off to a great start thanks to its simple concept, but it's the game's solid gameplay mechanics that keep this machine running. You encounter a wide range of people and situations, and you have a good number of options. There's a lot to do here, so you can spend a long time playing. It can become a little repetitive after a while, but that takes time. Fans of beat em ups or big monsters will want to get their hands on this game as soon as possible so they can smash and destroy the enemy forces. That's all guys. I hope this video was helpful in deciding which game to play, and thank you for checking out the list. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you at the next one.